Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually get some points on this MP. We want to finish the job. What I'm going to show you is the process for doing that. And in this particular case, let's go ahead and get some of the points because why not? It's MP0 and we're here to help. So, okay, but what I really want to show you is what computer scientists sometimes refer to as a workflow. It's a series of steps that you're going to repeat as you work on, ooh, touch my, as you work on sort of different parts of the MP, right? And you can get into a rhythm here where you kind of repeat these same series of steps and help yourself move forward one small chunk at a time. Okay, so first step in our workflow is to run the test suite. Well, actually, the first step uh, is also to open the test suite. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go into app, source, main, Java, and then under the EDU, Illinois, CSCS, CS, 125, Spring 21, MP directory, there's this MP0 test. Because part of understanding, we're going to describe what you need to do in the write-up to some degree. This write-up we didn't because we want you to get comfortable with looking at the tests. But in the future, the write-up will describe at a high level the types of things you need to accomplish. However, you will also learn a little bit from reading the test suites. Now, there's a lot of scary stuff in here. And that's one of the reasons why we do this together is because regardless of how much you think you know about programming, this is true for me, this is true for all the programmers and the computer scientists I know, when you work on even a medium-sized project, there is going to be code that you have no idea what it's doing. And if you try to understand every single line, every single file, you will be here for months. You will never finish the MP if you approach it that way. So you kind of have to think of it more as like, almost like a ninja, right? Find the parts that you need to understand and focus on those things. Ignore the rest. Figure out, and sometimes that literally means like there's some code that you don't really understand and you just kind of like, okay, whatever, that was weird, and try to focus on what actually needs to happen. So let's look at this test suite. Now again, this test suite contains a lot of code that is gonna be unfamiliar to you. Like what exactly is this doing? Scenario dot move to state, who cares, right? What's going wrong, right? So that's the first thing we wanna look at. When the test suite fails, it gives us some really useful information about what happened. So in this case, if I look down here, it's going to tell me the line number where the test suite failed. What the test suites do is that they run your program and then they make sure that a certain, certain things are as they expect. And so let's look at what happened here. So this is on line 45 in the MP0 test suite. And it says um, the value of get title, what we expected was search courses and what we found was search course. Okay, well now you're wondering like, why is that helpful, you know? Well, let's look a little bit more at this. So this is, um, you know, this is displaying the result of launching an activity. We're gonna talk more about Android and how the project is laid out and what's, every, what's where and stuff like that when we get to MP1, the next checkpoint where you'll have longer period of time and we'll be expecting you to do a little bit more work. But let's hunt around a little bit. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna look in main Java. So this is where the code, so there's really two parts of the code that we gave you. There's the test suites that live in test Java and then there's the code that actually runs your app and that lives in main Java. This is just a standard layout that's used by Android applications. So over here, you can see there are these other subdirectories like activities, adapters, application, models, network. We'll talk a little bit about some of the code in many of these directories in the future. But for now, you know what, again, look, obviously I know what I'm doing, but I've also had to hunt around in a lot of unfamiliar code bases. So I'm trying to express the thought process that goes into it. So this says activity scenario, main activity, activity scenario. So this seems to be talking about something called a main activity. And if I start opening these, you know, things over here, just poking around, you know, I notice that, you know, again, there's this network folder that has a client, a server, and models, and has a summary, and I don't know what any of this stuff is. This is gonna make more sense to us as we start to work with this code and get familiar with it. But 
I see this thing called main activity. Oh, okay, open that up. Again, confronted with this huge blob of code, right? You know, there's like, what, 150 lines in here. It's longer probably than any homework problem that we've done. And there's all sorts of scary, weird stuff that I've never seen before, right? Keywords I've never seen before, like this implement, like what on earth is this? I've got, you know, all this random stuff like jumping out at me and it's like really disorienting. However, maybe if I just sort of skim, right? Sometimes you just skim code, right? Don't try to think about exactly what's happening on every line. Just look for something that might be a clue, right? So I'm gonna skim this code and I'm looking, I'm just kind of like looking on line on line and I'm, I'm going to wait, hold on a sec. So let's go back to the test code. The test code's called this get title, right? This almost looks like a getter, right? So it's like it's retrieving this somehow, but how does, how does this get set? Like why is the value search courses as opposed to something else? Uh-huh, okay. I see this call to a method called set title. Eh, okay, so set title in main activity and get title in the test suite, something that seems to be main activity, maybe those are related. And here's another clue. The result that the test suite got when it called get title was search course. It was expecting search courses, but it got search course. And I see the string search course right here. Another way to approach this, to be honest, would have just been to search for search course throughout the project, which you can do in Android Studio and see if I can find this string anywhere, because that might have led me in the right direction as well. Okay, so let's make our first change. We're gonna try this. So it looks like from the test suite, the test suite expects this activity to have a title of search courses, but in reality, it has a title of search course. So it's just like a kind of typo, right? Not a big deal. Let's try fixing it. So I'm gonna change this from search course to search courses. Now, this is the critical part of this workflow, right? So how do we get here? We started from the test suite. We used some clues, you know, we poked around a little bit. We're brave, we can break things, we can change stuff, you know? Like nothing is gonna blow up, don't worry. Um, this is what's fun about this, is that we're tinkering. We found something that looked relevant looked related to what the test suite was trying to do. We've made a small change. What do we do now? Run the test suite again. We've made one character change to this project and we're gonna run the test suite again. When you are working on the MP, the more you run the test suites, the better you will do, the faster you will solve the problem and the happier human being you're going to be at the end of the day. Small changes, run the test suite. Small changes, run the test suite. The more code you write before you run the test suite, the more likely it is that you made a bunch of mistakes that are gonna be hard to find. The less code you write, the more likely it is that you understand what you've just done and the test suites are gonna help guide you in the right direction. So after all that, let's run the test suite again. So you see that it's building the project again. It's gonna rerun these test suites um, and blah, 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 blah. It's gonna think, it's gonna think. A few seconds are gonna go by and maybe something good's gonna happen. Let's see. Right, so, uh, okay, I got the same thing before, and it looks like, boom, right? For here, green check mark. That's what we like. Now, another thing I wanna point out, since we're just getting started, all this stuff, you know, sometimes students are like, oh gosh, there were error messages. You know what? The fact is that when you run code in real life, stuff is always going wrong, right? But most of the time, it's not important enough to worry about. So these type of warnings, uh, this warning, about test won't be run on blah, 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 totally harmless. This warning, same thing. Uh, this warning, totally harmless, not, not gonna impact anything. Um, so you start to kind of learn how to filter out like the stuff that you've seen over and over again that doesn't really seem to be a problem from the stuff that you need to fix. But we just fixed the test case. So to reward ourselves, let's run our grader. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the grade button and I'm waiting now, it's gonna take a minute. It's essentially, again, gonna run the test suites. It's also running this program called CheckStyle to check the style of our code to make sure that it follows certain conventions. Um, there, we still have a little bit more work to do, but when it comes to the actual test suites themselves, we're in good shape. We just saw that it passed. Um, and if you go back to the test suite, you can see 
that this test is worth 90 points. So this is pretty much the entire MP that we've just completed. And in addition, our score went up. So we're good. Okay, last thing I want to point out. It says, congratulations. You have increased your score from zero to 90. Whenever that happens and you're working on the MP, you need to commit your work right away. Um, so if I run the grader again, you're, you're going to see what's going to happen. It said the auto grader will not run until you commit the changes that increased your score. So go back to the Git workflow if you want to uh, a reminder about what it means to commit um, and push. But we'll also go through that in the next walkthrough where we talk about how to submit and view your scores online. Now, one of the things I'll point out is that we didn't get full credit. There's still 10 points out there. And those 10 points can be yours if you can figure out what to do with the output of the check style task. So I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for a reader. There's some very, very helpful information here, including the exact points in the project where there's a problem. So you can use the links in the output of the check style task to lead you directly to the files where you need to make some changes. Again, not a hard thing to do. The staff would also be happy to help you with this. Okay, so we're on, we're doing great. We have 90 points on the MP and we're developing an intuition for how to work with this large, scary, unfamiliar code base by using the tests to guide us. Using the tests, running the tests, looking for clues, not being worried if we don't understand everything all the time because nobody 